if you can't feel safe in your own home, where can we feel safe? When you think about your house, you think about safety. It's where you go to retreat, to get away from the world. It's where we grow up. It's where we have kids. It's where we mark on the inside of a doorway and they've gotten taller and taller. It's where we make memories. That's why it's so sacred. That's why it's so important. How many of us during the Thanksgiving holiday were in our own kitchens celebrating with our family? Christmas, right now, how many of us right now have a Christmas tree in our living room? Why do we do that? Why do we put Christmas lights outside our house? Why do we decorate our homes? Because they're ours, right? Because they're so important. And today, that's exactly why this day is so important. Because the sanctity, the safety of our homes has been compromised by what he did. He took her away. 28 years old. The rest of her life at the hands of this defendant. The Fort Worth Police Department has good officers. In fact, I've worked with some of the best officers in the state in my career. I trust them, trust them with my family. They actually do serve and protect. They don't have preconceived notions about the east side. They don't go to certain parts of town and say, some deserve to be served and protected, but not others. Only the good parts. Only the parts of town that I want to go to. That's not how it works here. Because our community is all of us. And it was her too. And despite what he thought, when he went over to that house, it was a dope deal gone bad, a robbery, or a shooting. High crime area. This is a 28-year-old woman that was a daughter, a sister, an aunt, studying to be a doctor, taking care of her nephew. Yolanda, her mom, was a good person. Zion was a good person. James Smith still lives on the east side. He's a good person. His family are good people. When you put on that badge and you put on that uniform, you say you're going to serve and protect us all. That means her too. And the Fort Worth Police Department, those officers that do serve and protect us and don't have those preconceived notions, that did a thorough investigation in this case, are ashamed that they ever called somebody like him a brother in blue. Because it means something when you put on a badge. It means you don't go to a house with a preconceived notion because you want to have that kind of power. Haven't we all met an officer that just likes being an officer a little too much? I've been pulled over by those guys before. Power hungry, tunnel vision, it's a little scary to me. Those people that we don't... I would object to that being outside the record and an expression of the prosecutor's personal opinion, which is absolutely irrelevant to this jury. Sustained stay within the record. Ask, the judge, ask you to instruct the jury to disregard the last comments of counsel. And the jury will disregard the last argument. And throughout the course of their entire investigation, what did the Fort Worth Police Department determine? They talked to 
all of these witnesses. They looked at all of the evidence in this case. What you guys got over the last two weeks, that's what they had. Forensic interview from Zion, witness interviews, they talked to folks, the autopsy report, the photographs, the body camera video, frame by frame by frame, just like what we watched. They went through all of that and they determined it's murder. They issued an arrest warrant and a district judge signed saying this is murder. The question in this case has never been, is it murder? The question that they raised this week was, is it self-defense? Is it self-defense? And what's really important about the court's charge is this is the law that applies. We do not view it based on what he says and only what he says. A person doesn't get to harm another, get up on the stand and say, well, I was doing it in fear of my life. And we just let them go. We just take their word for it. Imagine that scenario. Imagine what would happen if that were the law. Then not one single person would ever be held responsible and accountable for what they do if they can just say it is, so it is. That's not the way that it works. What the law is and what you guys have in front of you is that it has to be a reasonable belief and immediately necessary. And so how do we define what's reasonable, right? That's also in your court charge. It's a belief that would be held by an ordinary and prudent person. All of you guys, with what he did out there, was that reasonable? Was that immediately necessary? And here's one very important part, and I can tell you right now, when they get up and talk, they don't want you to focus on this. This is the law. This is what we're charged. This is what we're bound by. Unlawful deadly force. Unlawful force. The only way that this conduct is justified by this defendant is if it's reasonable to all of you what he did, immediately necessary, and the most important part is her, meaning Tatiana's, unlawful force towards him or unlawful deadly force. The only way he is justified in his conduct is that it's to the degree the actor reasonably believes the deadly force is immediately necessary to protect the actor, the actor being the defendant, against the other person, Tatiana's use of unlawful deadly force. So think about that for a minute. What has been unlawful about what Tatiana did? We have not seen one shred of evidence that anything that Tatiana did was unlawful. In fact, we heard quite the opposite. You can be in your own home, owning a weapon, owning a gun, and you can protect yourself in your home. That's one of the most fundamental rights. That's the reason we all feel so safe. A Tatiana Jefferson didn't commit any criminal act by walking up to the window with her gun, thinking someone was outside. It's what many of us would do if we were in our house in the middle of the night, in the back bedroom, and we hear somebody outside. That's what you would expect us to do, to try to protect ourselves, and in this case, Zion as well. So there's not been any evidence to support anything that she did was unlawful. And you got to have that. That's what the law says. And if you think about it, it makes sense in this case because she was in her own home. If we can't feel safe there, where in the world are we going to feel safe? This defendant, when he put on this uniform, he has a tremendous amount of power, right? A tremendous amount of power. And when we talk about what's reasonable, when I talked earlier about the Fort Worth Police Department, when they went through 
and they did their thorough investigation of what happened out there, they considered all of what you guys have seen as well as the general orders. I put that in here too. You guys can ask for that. If you guys want to go through, you can ask for the general orders. You can see exactly what they say. It's not about what I say they say or they say they say or any kind of spin that the defendant wants to put on it when he took the stand. It's exactly what is written down. It's the very thing that the defense said in opening statement. They followed all the steps and procedures as you are supposed to. An open structure is a silent alarm, and he did everything right. That is what this Jay Coons got up here and said. He wouldn't agree with anything that we asked him, but that's the one thing he said. Everything he did was right. Well, that is not the case. Very first thing, officer receiving the call, that's him, right? He's the she officer. He's the main officer. He calls the shots. Step two, B. All main exit ways should be guarded so as to prevent the escape of any defender. We start there and we fail, right? And that was one amongst the many, 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 many things that he did wrong because it wasn't important to him to serve and protect that day. It was important for him to get there, get in the action. Power. It can corrupt certain people. Certain people don't need to wear a badge. Certain people do not need to have the power <coughs> and the control if they do not respect the accountability and in this case the grave effect that it had. Now you guys have the ability today <coughs> Over three and a half years, we've waited. They've waited. They've waited for this day. Everybody in this room and all the rooms outside of this room and everybody in this community has waited for today. Because today, you say you can't create the danger and then claim self-defense. We want to feel safe in our own home. Today, you guys' decision in this case, finding him guilty says, I'm holding you responsible. I'm holding you accountable. I'm following the law. And with the power you all have today, which is more power today to change lives, to hold people accountable than most people have in a lifetime. The power you guys have today is to hold him responsible. It's to tell them that it all wasn't in vain. It's to say that she matters. They matter. East side matters. We protect everyone. And the law agrees. Everything in this case, all of the evidence in this case, is demanding a guilty verdict. That is exactly what we are asking for from all of you today. We know what he does with power. What are you guys going to do with it? You find him guilty.